So a follower of my videos here sent me an interesting solution to the lack of sound card drivers for the Raspberry Pi. This is also nice for those who aren't blessed by living down the road from a computer recycler who can supply them with cheap office Dells. So hopefully this can give people some ideas to do some Plan 9 grid type stuff, but without needing several machines actually running Plan 9 or 9 front. So I'm on the Video Pi here, which is one of the Raspberry Pis on my grid. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B, and the video, the HDMI, is plugged into a little USB video input dongle, and it's plugged into a Linux box running OBS. That's how I capture these videos here. So I can go ahead and toggle on a terminal running on the Linux machine. And here I will run NC, which is Netcat, which does kind of what it sounds like. It cats stuff off a network interface. And I'll give it the L flag to just listen and P to specify a port. And so this is telling it to just listen for anything coming in on port 9090 and output it. But I'm going to pipe that into a play, which is a command line uh, audio player. And I'll tell it T for raw and F for CD, which is a little kind of a macro for a 16 bit little Indian stereo, which is the um, audio format that Plan 9 and 9Front use. So I'll hit enter, and we can see it's sitting here now playing data coming in from that port. And so that'll just wait there. On my 9Front terminal, I'm going to use serve to set up like a named pipe to that port on the Linux machine. So SR, whoops, B, specify that'll be a TCP connection. I'll give it the address of that Linux machine and port 9090, and then give it a name. I'll give it L audio. And it says it posted it. And there it is right there. So, whoops. This means that I can now use an MP3 player and give it a file. Send that to serve L audio. And there it is. It's now playing some YouTube friendly music. But there's an interesting trick to this sort of method of playing audio off the Pi. I'm going to hit delete. And I just killed the audio player. But it already sent quite a bit of data over to the Linux machine, which buffered it up. And so it will continue to play for a little bit. And there it is, finally ran out of buffer. So, um, sort of an interesting little way to, you know, get a Linux sort of behave like a, kind of like plan nine grid stuff where you can pipe things over. Um, so yeah. Hope you have fun with that. And in the meantime... So I usually keep my videos to fairly concise instructional topics, but I've fallen behind on finishing up um, some drivers to that router board I've been working on uh, because of the hilarious news about Twitter. It has been the proverbial comedy goldmine. And since this is a rather short video, uh, I figure I have some time to fill. Whatever your stand on Elon Musk and how he runs things, uh, a big takeaway is just how many people are now shocked that they might be losing their easy mode internet shit posting forum or are complaining about being censored on a forum that they do not own. As a matter of fact, their easy mode internet platform is often funded by ads from companies they might not even like. Uh, this is glaringly obvious with the people who hear about Mastodon as a alternative Twitter and quickly get stumped 
by trying to understand that they have to sign up to an individual server and they need to do some due diligence that it is hosted by someone competent. And someone like Donald Trump can just pay someone to fork Mastodon and run a server for them. The takeaway is Web 2.0 is about big, centralized, and algorithms designed to feed you ads. It, it was Web 1.0 that was actually had all the free speech because back then you had to set up your own server and then you and your friends could say whatever you want. Uh, Web 1.0 freedom with 2.0 convenience was never going to be a thing. If you want uh, a spoon-fed experience, someone has to be paid to hold that spoon. And I'm not going to guess how many engineers Twitter needed, but 24-7 monitoring of several server farms, moderation to at least weed out truly criminal behavior, and most importantly, to craft a user experience that pleases the advertisers that pay for all this probably takes more than 200 people. If you don't want to fall into this sort of trap, then always be learning. If you want an open source, decentralized microblogging platform, then learn how something like Mastodon works or learn to make something better than Mastodon. If you don't want to be a cow being milked for data by some advertising hungry and soulless corporation, learn how the technology around you works. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much already awesome stuff is actually deliberately broken and horribly bloated. And with that, I'll leave a link to a podcast down below uh, about a guy who went from teaching himself to run his own server to teaching himself how to be a serious internet exchange. And as always, have fun.